What's going on, everybody? It is your favorite Auntie Mo, and we are back for another episode review of Power. This is season six, episode 10. No one can stop me. Okay, before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think about this video. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and then hit the notification bell so you will know whenever I upload new content. Let me get my thumbnail in real quick. Okay, so look, y'all, this episode of Power. I was expecting so much more for it to be the mid-season finale. As you know, it ain't coming back on again until January 5th. So I expected so much more suspense and, and drama and twists and turns and a better cliffhanger. I kind of expected, I predicted the cliffhanger just based on how the episode was going. So I kind of knew what would happen at the end. It gave me a little bit of a surprise, but again, it was sort of predictable and I was expecting a little bit more. But all in all, the episode was it was okay. It wasn't bad. So, hopefully y'all are ready for the review because I'm ready to give it to you. So, let's get right on up into it. All right, y'all. So, we got it starting off with Ghost. He's sitting in his um, hotel room. He's sitting back and he's just reflecting on everything, right? He ends up calling Tyreek and he leaves a message for Tyreek. Basically saying he wants to have a real, real father, real man. Talk, uh, father, son, talk with him, whatever. You know, he wants to talk to him man to man. And he just wants to get some things off of his chest it's a lot of things that he didn't have growing up and he just wants to be able to explain a lot of things to him right so he ends up leaving him a message afterwards he ends up getting a phone call from Ramona Ramona tells him to turn on his TV cuz it's a lot going on you need to turn on the goddamn news right now he turns on the news come to find out Walsh is going to Loretta Walsh that is she is later on going to announce ghost as her new running mate for lieutenant governor in the upcoming race and so it's all on everything it's all all on the news now ghost is starting to feel like the man of course he got Ramona behind him riding on his coattails backing up every damn every goddamn thing that he say so he feeling like the man right now whatever right Sax ends up showing up over there at Warner's office. He's telling him that he needs to go ahead and he needs to be investigating Ghost a lot more, that he needs to search his hotel room because there could be evidence in, his, in the hotel room of him either killing Keisha or him being linked to a whole nother murder. You never know. Now, of course, as soon as uh, Warner sees Sax, he's like, how the hell did your ass even get in here? You ain't even got no damn badge. You ain't even supposed to have your ass up in here. Of course, he say his badge still work. Warner like, okay, I'm going to have security come and haul your ass on a out of here because motherfucker, you ain't supposed to be up in here. So he's steady adamant to Warner that they need to check on Ghost um, Hotel Room. They need to search his hotel room because he could be linked to this, he could be linked to that. Warner tells him, look here, you think we were stupid enough not to look at the surveillance camera? We already checked shit out. Come to find out Ghost has a legitimate alibi. He was with Tate the night of Lakeisha's murder, so we know he did not murder Lakeisha. Get your ass on up out my office, or better yet, go home and let Ghost and Tommy come to the crib and come tie your ass up again because you know they don't they don't believe nothing his ass say no more. So when he tried to tell them about when Tommy and Ghost actually came to his house, it's like a little boy that cried wolf. They don't believe a goddamn thing he say. So um of course Sax is like that goddamn happened. Don't say that shit to me. He like, get your goddamn ass on up out of my office with this bullshit. You always coming in with the same old goddamn shit. So Ghost ends up having breakfast with uh, Loretta Walsh and with Ramona, right? They're all congratulating him on the new upcoming um, press conference that they've been to have. They've been to announce him as her new running mate or whatever, right? Now, Loretta also says that she wants to be able to show the new building for the QCP project. So she wants to be able to show people that, you know, they getting out here, they making moves right now. You know what I'm saying? They waiting on an election. She thinks that that'll look really good on her campaign. Now, of course, Ghost ends up telling her something came up with the QCP building that I had. Um, you know, the building fell through. I don't have that building, so I'm going to have to work on getting something else. So Loretta tells him, look here, one of the whole reasons why I got your ass is because of this QCP project. So if you ain't going to be able to pull through with this for me like I want you to, then I'm going to have to make some other moves. One of the other moves may be I just might have to run with... um. Rashad Tate is my running mate. You know what I'm saying? And Ghost is like, damn, you gonna do me like that? She like, hell yeah, I'm gonna do you like that, motherfucker. Oh, like I said, the only reason why I got you on here because you black. You my black vote. And if you can't come through pulling through what you said you was gonna do, then I'm gonna have to seven times with your ass. So she tells him, look here, Loretta, holla at me when y'all get everything straight with the building. I'm finna go handle on some other shit. Holla at y'all when I holla at y'all, but I need y'all to do something like 
post haste because I need to announce this shit later on. So, so when she gets up and leave, Ghost talking to Ramona like, damn, she really going to do me like that? Like after she was just sitting up here shitting on Sean, she going to go back over there to his ass knowing that he was talking shit. Ramona like, hell yeah, that'll look good on both their ass. Like two candidates that were at odds, they end up making up. They can end up working together. And as soon as he gets on in there, say she does get an office, he going to do everything he can to destroy my reputation along with your reputation. So I'm going to need us to get that goddamn building like you said you're going to get that building because we got some shit to goddamn do. So later on, he ends up actually going and he buys this building from his uncle. It was like this old kickback lounge, little hole in the wall type thing. That was just that one part, but he actually, his uncle actually owned the whole building. So he ended up buying the building from here. So Ghost ended up coming through, you know, <laughs> if Ghost don't do nothing else, that motherfucker know how to make some power moves and come through with whatever the hell it is he said he gonna goddamn come through with. Detective Blanca ends up going and meets with Warner, right? She tells Warner that she ended up finding some evidence that could possibly link Ghost to killing uh, Terry Silver, right? She says that she ended up meeting up with, Twi with uh, Tasha. Now, of course, she doesn't say anything about her having sex with her, but she tells Warner that she ended up meeting up with Tasha, and Tasha gave her the exact location of where she could find Terry Silver's body. Now, of course, um, Warner's like, that doesn't implicate ghosts that implicates Tasha if she can tell you the exact location where she can find Terry Silver's body now she also says that she found some dirt in Terry Silver's car that matches the dirt from the original groundbreaking of the QCP project and that that could possibly link her um link him being close to ghosts or ghosts being somewhere around there at the time of his death now one is like look here Y'all done went after Ghost Ass before, or James St. Patrick as they call him. Y'all done went after him before over the death of somebody else. Come to find out he was completely exonerated. So we gonna need some hardcore proof and some hardcore evidence before we end up going after this man and he ends up getting off again because we not gonna make ourselves look stupid once again. So if you can find some hardcore evidence, then I can get you a search warrant and you can go and see if you can find a match with the dirt or whatever else evidence that you got. But until then, don't come back at me with this same old bullshit that y'all doing. So, Sax and Blanca end up going over to um, Tate's administrative office, right? So, they go in there. They trying to see if Tate is going to vouch for Ghost that he was actually with him the night that um, Lakeisha Grant or whoever else got murdered, right? So, uh, for, at first, they asked Tate, like, did he ever say anything to you about him being upset um, that his wife was an, in an affair with another man? Did he say he was going here and doing this and the other? Now, at first, Tate said no. He didn't have no knowledge about it. Now, at the same time, Sax and Blanca are arguing somewhat in front of Rashad. Like, look here. If he's saying he don't notice and he can't say this. Now, in a way, I, that was a trigger to me that they were trying to coerce this motherfucker, right? Next thing you know, Sax kind of starts putting words in Tate's mouth. He was like, so you saying that um, Ghost told you or St. Patrick told you that he was upset? He told you that his wife was having an affair with his um, attorney, Terry Silver? Then Tate was like, yep, you know what? As a matter of fact, he did tell me that he was upset about that. He told me he was in rage. He was in a rage. He left in a rage and he was going to go look for his wife and he was going to go look for Terry Silver because he was upset that he found out his wife was having an affair with Terry Silver. Now, this whole time, Blanca is looking because she knows the shit is wrong, but she ain't saying nothing about it because at the same time, she trying to get, um, um, she trying to get a close on investigation as well, right? So after they end up talking with Tate, they have him sign this illegal statement lying on everything that happened, right? So when they leave out of there, Sax is telling Blanca, like, here, here you go. You can get your search warrant right there. And Blanca's like, you know that this is illegal. We, we could go to jail for this shit. This shit ain't right. He was like, look here. All you needed was a search warrant. What you do with this, what you find from here, you're going to find enough evidence of what we do right here. It ain't even going to make a difference. I'm like, see, this motherfucker Sax, now, he needs to go. Sax needs to go. He doing way too goddamn much. He, he, sex, sex needs to be the next one to go. Ghost ends up meeting up with Simon. Simon Stewart, I believe that's who he is. I call him his white daddy. He's that old rich white guy. He always goes to him whenever he need a big ass lump sum of money. So of course he going to him because he looking to get the money for the QCP project. Notice he can't go to Jason because he's healing already killed Jason. So he's going to Simon so he can get the money from him to open up the building or whatever for the QCP project. Now after he gets his money from him, Ghost is walking leaving out the building and you can see the 
somebody is watching ghosts. You don't know who it is. You can't see where it is and what it is. But you can see that somebody is off in the distance and they're looking at ghosts. So he's being watched by somebody. We just don't know who the fuck it is. So Ghost gets home. He's sitting back and he's reflecting on things. Next thing you know, Angela Ghost pops up on him. And she's proud of him, telling him, you know, they get to talking about Ramona. And she tells him to let Ramona see the good side of you. This side of you right here. She ain't from the streets. She ain't from the hood. She ain't on the standards hood life. So don't let her see that bad side of you. Everything that you're doing right now is good. And I'm proud of you. And of course, he's feeling himself. He happy because he's thinking that he's on the right path doing everything. Mind you, he getting more and more cocky. As time goes on. Later, he ends up meeting up with Ramona. And he tells Ramona that he ended up finding a new spot for the QCP project. They all happy. They end up hugging. Next thing you know, they embrace and they share a kiss. Now, you can tell Ramona was kind of knocked off her feet. She was kind of taken aback like, oh, my God. <laughs> what was this? I was like, damn, Ramona, get you some girl. It did look juicy or whatever. So, she was kind of backing up from him just a little bit. Like, you, I don't know if. She was feeling it, but she was like, hold on, let's slow this Mustang down. Or she was like trying to play him. I don't know what it was, but she kind of put James back a little bit to where he kind of had to back up like, oh, okay, you know, I see what it is. But as this is going on, you got Blanca at Ghost Apartment doing a seek and search. That's basically where they go in there, they search everything, but they leave everything exactly the way it is. They just taking pictures, taking fingerprints of things, and leaving everything exactly the way it is, right? So of course Ramona is going through, she just so happens to find the phone that Dre planted in there the last episode. She gets it, pulls it up, can I have a tech open up this phone? And of course, we know that that's Terry Silver's phone, so now they're going to have some evidence to go against Ghost. Because again, like I said, Dre was the one that planted that phone, but again, Sax was the one that gave him that phone to plant in that damn hotel room. But I had a feeling, this one, this this was not a good plan. It just wasn't a good plan. Loretta does her press conference, and that's when she announces Ghost is her new running mate, uh, running mate for Lieutenant Governor. Now, at the same time, Tommy is looking in the background. He He's an old creeper, my creeper ass nigga looking in the background like, yeah, nigga, I see this goddamn move that you making. So after the little press conference that they have or whatever, Ghost ends up going over to Raina's grave site. He's out there telling her, you know, just talking to her and telling that he, you know, he's done all this for her and he's going to open up this new project in her name and he hopes that he's proud of her. Now, at the same time, he's getting ready to leave. That's when Tasha walks up. He asks Tasha, what you doing here? She's like, motherfucker, I'm here every week. What the hell is you doing here? He says that, of course, he was there paying his respects to Raina. They kind of argue back and forth. He ends up telling Tasha that he releases her from the man. I was like, nigga, releases you, bitch? What the... I ain't a motherfucking dumb. Like, you releasing me? What the fuck does that mean? He says that he is releasing her from the marriage because he has now found somebody else and he is ready to move on. She, of course, knows that it's Ramona. Now, you could see Tasha was hurt and she was pissed off at the same damn time because, again... Ghost is getting more and more cocky as this, since he was, you know, got this new announcement that he finna be running political office. He done got this whole new cockiness about him. So like I said, Tasha looking at him like, motherfucker, you just don't know the bullshit storm you got coming your goddamn way. And I'm here for it. So Blanca ends up going to Warner. She shows him everything that they found. They found evidence of dirt on um, ghost shoes. That same dirt matches the QCP, the original ground break breaking. The same dirt that was in Terry Silva's car. Like all this evidence. Of course, Warren is like, okay, this could have been dirt at any time. You can't prove that Terry wasn't at the uh, groundbreaking before or afterwards. Like, you can't put no time stamp on no dirt. So, you got to show me something better than this. Blanca ends up pulling out the cell phone that she found, right? Now, Warner... He was like, hold on, you mean to tell me Ghost, or James St. Patrick as they call him, he's a train killer, he's been getting away with this under the FBI's nose for this long, and he would be so careless as to leave a phone why does day open like that? Like, that doesn't make any sense. If this is really the man that y'all say he is, why would he be so careless as to leave a phone out there like that? And why would he leave a brightest day for that to, for anybody to catch that? That doesn't make any sense. So Blanca's like, well, well, sir, like, I don't know. And she was like, better yet, 
who would leave that phone there? They end up putting two and two together, figure out that Sax played they ass. They end up figuring, and I'm glad they figured that shit out, that Sax ended up playing they ass. They just don't know how he ended up planting that phone in there. But they figured out that he was the one that ended up playing they ass and put that phone in there. Because Warner was like, he was adamant when he came here this morning about me going and putting a search warrant on Ghost Hotel Room. Now we see why. This motherfucker Sax. No damn good. Ghost is back at his club, right? Tay ends up coming in there telling him, like, look here, I got to warn you about something right now. And look, I thought at first that Tay was going to give him some kind of heads up, like, look here, the FBI done came by here. They didn't ask me about you. Even if he is grimy, he probably would have used that to flip that on him in some kind of way. I still thought that he was going to give him some kind of warning, right? But again, Ghost getting real fly at the mouth. He started talking shit to Tay, basically saying that, you know, because Tay told him, look here, I'm not here to start no shit with you i understand when i've been you know out with or whatever i can shake my hand you know shake your hand i'm a man of my word i can be a loser you know it is what it is here go ghost talking shit yeah you used to losing you a loser ass nigga you can't be better than me i won ain't nobody gonna stop me from getting what i want that includes you whoop de whoop yada 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 now at the same time he ends up getting a text message from Tyreek saying that you know he wants to he got his message he'll meet up with him and he'll talk with him right now again tape was gonna warn him of something but Ghost just kept on running his mouth, and the more and more he was running his mouth, you could see Tate looking. He getting more and more pissed off, like, oh, yeah? You want to talk this hot shit? All right, my nigga, I got you. It is what it is. So he don't even say nothing to him. Really, Ghost don't even give him the opportunity to say anything. Ghost talk his hot shit, walk off, leave Tate there, pissed off, steaming hot. He mad. I say, this ain't the last we done seen in this little nigglet right here. He finna come back with some heat. Reek ends up showing up over there at Ghost Club, right? Now, as Reek walks in, he apologizes. I mean, well, no, first, Ghost ends up apologizing to Reek. Both of them say that neither one of them want to fight with each other, right? Now, next thing you know, Reek actually ends up bringing Dre there. He said he brought Jay, Dre because Dre threatened to go to the police. He knows everything about what, you know, what's going on and the whole shoot with Ray Ray, everything. He threatened to go to the cops, so he wants to come and talk to Ghost himself. Ghost tells Ree, go away for your little friend in the hallway. I thought that was some shady ass shit right there. Dre ends up telling Ghost, like, look him up. Like, I think you need to watch your mouth because I know a lot of shit that's going on. I'm coming to you because I need some money. I'm trying to get the hell on up out of here. He was like, look here. Ghost tells him all I got is 250 bands and I need to go get the shit. I ain't even got it on me. Um, First, uh, Dre was like, look here. I need more money than that. And how the fuck am I supposed to believe you any damn way? Next thing you know, Ghost starts talking shit to Dre, calling him a wannabe gangster, a little helpless ass bitch. He needs him. He coming to him for money that he ain't going to do shit. He ain't nothing, yada, yada, yada. He's steady running his mouth to Dre. Then he's like, look here, little bitch, like I told you, I got to go get this money. I meet you in an hour. I text you with the address. Get the hell on up out of my club. Dre ends up leaving, going on about the club, right? After he leaves... Ghost ends up calling the security guard that was watching the builder from him last episode when he ended up killing Jason, little Serbian dude, right? And as soon as he answered the phone, the security guard dude was like, damn, I was waiting to hear when I was going to hear from your ass. Ghost tells the security guard, look here, the surveillance camera that you got, a surveillance footage that you got, a little light-skinned dude that walked up into the building, yeah, I need you to go ahead and turn it into the police and the rest of your money be on the way. Security dude was like, already, I got you. I said, this nigga here, Ghost, he out for blood because he said the same thing to Dre. Ain't nobody going to stop me. Ain't nobody going to step in the way of doing what I came here to do. Ghost ends up meeting up with Tommy right now. Of course, they still on that same old bullshit. They want to kill each other. But Tommy does know now that Ghost wasn't the one that killed Akeisha. But, of course, he still doesn't know who exactly it was that killed Akeisha. But, again, they still on the same old bullshit. They want to kill each other, right? So, they sitting out there arguing. Next thing you know, Ghost ends up start talking shit again to Tommy. Basically, he tells him that Tommy's always needed him, that he don't need him, that he's out, that he don't want nothing to do with him, that he's cutting him off. And Tommy's telling him, like, look here, what you mean you cutting me off? Like, you mean to tell me that you finna go on and you finna live your life and now I ain't got nothing? Tommy is heated. He take out his gun like he finna get ready to shoot ghosts. Next thing you know, bullets start flying. Ghost and Tommy both got their guns out, and it's somebody that's shooting at them. Ghost is like, really? You got your hitters out here to shoot me? Tommy like, man, I don't know nothing about this. So they end up shooting back. Ghost asks Tommy, how many dudes is it? Tommy looks up, sees it. It's two dudes that shoot back at them, right? 
So Tommy ends up going in, ghost cover for him. Tommy ends up going in the building. I don't know who the hell he shot. Next thing you know, you hear somebody hit the flow. Ghost thinking that it's Tommy. I thought it was Tommy too, because he calling out Tommy's name. Tommy don't say nothing back. Next thing you know, Ghost runs up in there. It's some dude laid out dead on the floor. I don't know who the dude was. If y'all know who the dude was, leave down in the comments below, because I don't know who the hell the dude was. But the dude is sitting there laying dead. I don't know where the hell Tommy was, because Tommy was up out of there. Next thing you know, Ghost ends up running up out of there. So I'm like, well, wait a minute. Who was shooting at them and who was that dude? So I'm still kind of lost on that. But if y'all know who that was and know what that dude was, uh, hell, where the hell Tommy went? Y'all let me know. So Tamika is going to be Sax, I guess his representation, his lawyer, whatever, because they end up meeting up with Warner and Blanca. They end up asking Sax about the phone that they end up finding over there at um, Ghost Place that he end up finding that there. So Blanca ends up spilling the beans about how she bought Terry, um, she bought, um, Sax alone when she went and she found Terry Silver and that he could have got the damn phone from there and how he also coerced Tate into that statement and so that's how she ended up getting a search warrant to um, search Ghost Apartment. I mean his um, hotel room or whatever, right? Now at this time, Warner his motherfucking mind is blown. He's like, bitch, how could you be this dumb to let Sax play you like that? Because, of course, she pissed off at Sax talking about you play me. No, bitch, you let him play you. That's your damn fault. So, of course, Warner is pissed off at this point, right? Now, Tamika is trying to, um, trying to tell Warner and Blanca, look here. I know y'all mad at him, but if y'all go public and say that he was the one that did this, this, that, and the other, that's going to blow y'all whole damn case, and it's going to blow back on y'all goddamn ass. So what do y'all want the headlines to look like? Like, U.S. District Attorney end up getting played and whoop de whoop end up going free, or this person ends up getting the lethal injection due to the kingpin statue, whoop de whoop yada, yada, yada. Do y'all want it to look bad on y'all end and let this man walk free? Or do y'all want to use this phone to get whatever you need to do to get this man behind bars because y'all already know that he crooked as hell? So she's trying to play their ass. She's trying to get back in good with their ass. And I got a feeling if they end up running with that, something end up going her way, she going to try to use that to try to work her way back up in there. Y'all, you can't trust none of these motherfuckers on there. And then on top of that, for her even to put that bug in their ear like they can use that phone, knowing that the way that they forgot that phone is illegal. Although, yes, he did kill Terry Silverman. It's still the principality of it. <laughs> That's fucked up. Dre is at the spot. He got the text message from Ghost where to meet up so he can get that money, right? Next thing you know, laws end up rolling up on Dre, end up arresting his ass for the murder of Jason, Serbian dude, right? Next thing you know, Ghost ends up rolling up on Vincent, tells Vincent that he needs a favor from him. He needs him to get a burner phone on the inside of the prison. He ends up getting the phone in there to 2-Bit. That was uh, one of Tommy's homeboys, right? So he ends up calling 2-Bit, and of course 2-Bit pissed off because he like, Ghost, what the fuck you got me? You call to me for you Tommy homeboy and I ain't fuck with Tommy he like look here what Tommy did was messed up and I ain't had nothing to do with that but look here I need a favor from you and I'm thinking his favor was he wanted him to try to go and kill Dre and I'm gonna tell you why in a minute but of course whatever the damn favor was 2-bit was down for you know 2-bit is a low that gangster said trip and banging he ready to take anybody head off he TTG trained to go at all times. Ghost goes back to his club, and when he goes back to his club, Paz is in there. That's Angela's sister, right? So she tells um, Ghost that she knows that he wasn't the one to kill Angela, that she got the autopsy report back, and the way that the report said that he wasn't the one that actually killed Angela, right? But she's still adamant that he knows who it was that killed Angela. She also wanted to know what it was that Angela was doing when she was trying to keep them out of prison. Of course, Jamie's like, I don't know what happened. I don't know who killed her. I don't this, that, and the other. At the same time he's talking to Paz, you got Ramona over here ear hustling, listening to everything that's going on. So, of course, Ghost don't tell Paz nothing because although he does know who killed Angela, he not finna tell her nothing, right? Paz get pissed. She ends up leaving up out of there. Next thing you know, Ramona ends up walking up. She was like, who was that? And what the hell was going on? He tells her that that was Angela Valdez's sister and that, you know, she was upset because they shared the same common interest. They both lost somebody, lost somebody dear to them, which was Angela, right? So she was like, well, what was she talking about? You know, such and such trying to keep you out of jail. Like, me and my husband didn't work out because of lies and I ain't trying to get into nothing with nobody else because of no damn lies. So whatever the hell you got going on, I'm gonna need you to fix that shit like right here and right now because I'm trying to be vulnerable with you. And if you're on some bullshit, then you need to let me know this. Go say that, you know, he down for the cause. He ain't finna be doing no lying, no none of that today. Nothing going on. That's what he reassures her. But y'all, 
We all know Ghost is a crooked ass motherfucker. Ghost ends up meeting up with Tasha at their old apartment to basically finalize their divorce, right? Now, they've remodeled everything back to the original way that it was. Like, it, you can even tell that a goddamn massacre that took place up in there. It wasn't riddled with bullets or nothing. It was basically um, back to its old original spot, right? So, they're talking, of course, they're going back and forth about Tyreek. She tells Ghost that Tyreek is in serious trouble with the feds, that they're investigating him for Ray Ray's murder. Now, Ghost ends up telling Tasha that he basically needs to take responsibility and that he needs to go and he needs to confess that he was the one that killed Ray Ray. Now, of course, Tasha's like, uh-uh. Why would he do that? And the plan was that she was supposed to take the rap for him anyway. Ghost's whole thing is once I get into Albany, meaning once he gets in office, that it'll benefit all of them, that he'll be able to get a good lawyer for him, maybe get him into military school, maybe get him off of probation. He's thinking that any jury in the world is going to be on his side when they find out that he went and killed his sister's murderer, which... I don't believe that. But anyways, that's what Ghost is basically trying to feed to her. And Tasha's whole thing is like, no, you said that you were going to take the rap for it, that he was going to be out of jail completely. Like, at this point, Ghost is starting to get, like, real cold-hearted. Like, he don't give a damn about nobody, about nothing that's going on with with nobody, you know what I'm saying? So at this point, Tasha gets pissed and she ends up leaving, right? After she leaves, he ends up going in Raina's old room and he's just sitting in there, reflecting in there. And of course, then Raina's spirit comes to her. Now, Raina, I was not expecting her spirit to pop out. I was like, oh, damn. They brought her back for real, for real. I think, you know, I had some mid-season finale. They gonna, you know, pop up with some surprises and all of that shit. So she comes out and she's like, why are you and mom always fighting this and the other? He's basically saying, since you're, you, you know, since you died, your mother hasn't been the same now, bitch. You ain't been the goddamn same. So he asked Raina's ghost, like, should Tyreek confess for what he did? And Raina's like, look here, the lies are what killed me. We need to start being honest in this family. Everybody needs to start taking responsibility for everything that they did. So basically, he's thinking like, okay, well, yeah, I need to go to Reek and tell Reek that he needs to go ahead and confess his sins, like, what the hell he did. And I'm like, no, ghost. What? Like, I, just me, the mom and me, I don't want, I'm going to go to jail before I let my baby go to jail. That's just me. But Ghost has gotten so damn cocky with it. He don't give a damn about nobody. Like, he done told Tasha, ain't nobody finna stand in the way of what the hell it is that he want to do. He out for blood and he don't give a damn who get in his way. Later on, Ghost actually ends up meeting up with Tyreek. And Tyreek was like, yeah, mom told me that they found my blood over there at uh, Ray Ray's apartment and that you want me to basically confess to killing him. Like, what's up with you? We talked about it. You were supposed to take the rap for it. Ghost gives him the same thing. Like, look here, once I get in office, I'll be able to get you a good ass lawyer, maybe some military school, and you'll be able to get out. Just like that. Rika's like, hell no. Like, if you get in office, this will benefit you. You want me to confess because this will benefit you. No, I'm not looking out for you no goddamn more. Like, if I don't blame Rika with that, even though Rika, you know, you did kill Ray Ray. You know what I'm saying? But um, then Reek tells him, look here, you know, how about you confess to the murders that you did? So was that start with Breezy? If y'all know who Breezy is, I don't remember who Breezy is. It's been six seasons, though. So if y'all remember who Breezy is, drop that down in the comments below and let me know. So Ghost did confess to killing Breezy. He said he was around Tyreek's age when he killed Breezy. That's because Breezy was standing in his way when he was trying to make his dreams happen. That's when he tells Reek again that nobody's going to stand in the way of, of the dreams and things that he has. So y'all, Ghost is on some like some some real cocky shit. But Reek ain't listening to him. Reek gets pissed. He gets up and he leaves. He likes Look here, no. This shit gonna benefit you. It ain't gonna benefit me. So, of course, Ghost is pissed off. He's like, look here, Rick. I'm trying to look out for you, son. Warner and Blanca end up meeting up with the judge. The same judge that they had tried to get to convict Ghost the first time when he got convicted of the last crime that he ended up getting exonerated from, right? They're showing him all the evidence that they found. And, of course, the judge is not trying to hear it because the judge is on the same shit that Warner was initially on. They look, look. He's like, look here, y'all gonna have to come at me with some hardcore, solid evidence. Otherwise, everything that y'all show Showing me it's a bunch of bullshit and I'm not trying to hear it. So he's showing them shit. Um, well, they showing him shit left and right, and he's just throwing it out. Child, next thing you know, Warner ends up pulling the cell phone out of his pocket and showing it to the judge, thinking that the judge is gonna fall for it. Child, next thing you know, Blanca is talking with Paz and she's talking with Tate, telling them that the judge didn't believe anything that they said and that they threw everything out. 
He don't believe nothing they goddamn said. So basically, Ghost is getting ready to walk away, a free man, and everything that they work for trying to convict him of is going out the window. So basically, Ghost is winning in this whole thing. And so, of course, Paz is pissed. Tate is pissed. Then they end up and they end up going and telling Sax about it. And we all know Sax is, Sax is the main one because Sax is the one that had the most to lose. Blanca ends up going to meet with Dre. Now, he's in jail now, right? Now, he tells Blanca that he got a hit out on him in prison. Niggas is trying to kill him. That must have been the phone call that Dre, I mean, that um Ghost ended up making a two-bit when he gave him that burner phone or whatever, right? So, he's telling um Blanca that Blanca needs to do something to get his ass up out of there. Blanca, like, look here, I can maybe end up cutting you a deal for 10 years, but I need you to answer one question for me. Did you know anything about Ghost killing Terry Silver? Did he say anything to you about it? Dre like, no. He didn't say anything to me about it because I was there. I seen everything. And of course, after that, she starts coercing his ass on what to say. Because at first he was like, yeah, we were in his apartment. She's like, no, you mean y'all were in the parking garage? He was like, yeah, we were in a parking garage. I told Ghost to stop. He didn't want to stop. He just kept on going till he killed old dude. Next thing you know, Blanc is like, all right, I'm going to have you out here by the end of the night tonight. I just need to work on it. I'm going to go holla at the judge. I say, here they go with this goddamn cricket ass shit because we already know they going to do any. Now we see. Blanc is starting to get crooked, just like Sax. Sax is starting to rub off on her ass. So anything crooked that she can do to get uh, Ghost ass locked up, that's what she's trying to do now. Now, Ghost is having a party at his club. He's celebrating that he's been announced as the new running mate for um, Loretta Walsh, right? As he's having this party, you know, Simon Stewart is there. All the big wigs is there, right? Tyreek ends up showing up. He comes to Ghost, and he's like, look here, so you really want me to turn myself in? He's like, yes, yeah, son, I really want you to turn yourself in. Now, Reek, at the same time, has his look in his eye like he really don't trust his ass, whatever, right? And I'm noticing at the same time, something, something ain't right with that. So, Tamika ends up going and meeting with Sax. She tells Sax that basically the judge threw everything out that Ghost is getting ready to walk free and that Warner has already signed a petition for his warrant and that they're giving him till tomorrow morning to turn himself in. So Sax is like, so Ghost is going to walk free and I got to go to jail. Tamika's like, yep. I don't know how long you're going to have to do, but yeah, you're going to get booked and you're going to jail. At this point, Sax is pissed. He drunk as hell. After Tamika leaves, this nigga ends up getting his gun. And at first I'm thinking, okay, whoa, don't pull no move like that. I'm not ready. But he ends up getting that gun, taking a couple shots to the head, and going walking down the street. He mad now. He looking for ghosts. He like, oh, nah, I be goddamn if I'm going to jail and this nigga finna be free. Oh, no, ma'am, it's not finna happen. Ghost is at the club closing up after the whole party. He feeling himself. He the man right now, right? Next thing you know, Kanan's ghost ends up popping up. Kanan's ghost is like, yeah, motherfucker, thought you was rid of me, bitch. Here I go. He like, look here, Kanan. I ain't got time for this shit. You and your boogie woogie ass, get the hell on up out of here. Kanan like, look here, that's why can't nobody stand your ass. Because you selfish. You only look out for yourself. At that same time, he even getting cocky with the ghost. He's like, fuck you, nigga. I'm the man right now. I'm winning. I'm finna be in political office. You can't boo, boo, boo. You can't scare me. You and your ghost. Get the hell on up out of here. Next thing you know, Kane and Ghost disappear. But Kane and Ghost give him a warning like, look here, bitch. Everything you doing, it's gonna come back on your ass. Know this. Chai, next thing you know, you see Sax walking down the street. He drunk than a motherfucker with his pistol in his pocket. He finna go look for this nigga. You see Dre driving down the street. He done got out of jail. Blanca got his ass out for snitching. He being a snitch nigga. I say, oh, this nigga looking for somebody to goddamn kill. Next thing you know, you see Tyreek. He walking. He got the look of death in his eye. I say, what this nigga finna go do? You see Tommy walking down the street. He got his gun cock lock ready to go. I say, oh, what this motherfucker finna do? Next thing you know, you see Tate. He got on his goon gear. 
all blacked out with a hoodie on. I say, oh, this is old dog from Minister Society. What the fuck finna go down now? Then you see Tasha. She walking like, oh, I don't want to have to kill this motherfucker, but I kill this motherfucker. I swear for God I kill this motherfucker. She walking down. I say, oh, what the fuck is finna go on here? Everybody on high alert. They ready to go get this nigga. At the same time, Blanca got a warrant. She about to go serve ghosts. Everybody on their way to the club to get this nigga, right? Next thing you know, Ghost is standing on top. It's all black in the club. He's looking over his whole club like, yeah, I'm the man right now. He hears something. Next thing you know, it pans out to Blanca. You hear a pop. Turns back to Ghost. You see him falling. You see blood coming on him. It's like he's reaching for somebody. Somebody done shot Ghost, y'all. It was like an episode straight out of Simpsons. Who killed or who shot Mr. Burns is exactly what it was like. Because everybody had a motive. Everybody had a reason. Somebody shot him. We don't know who. And again, we don't know who it was that was sitting up there watching his ass from the distance neither. You know what I'm saying? So y'all, the episode ended right there and it ain't gonna come back to January 5th. Ain't this some shit? Y'all, like I said, this episode, it was okay. I expected a lot, lot more to it. Although they did leave us with a good cliffhanger. You know what I'm saying? Who shot Mr. Burns? We don't know. So if it was anything that I missed, y'all already know. Put it down there. Let your auntie know about it. Let's talk about it, okay? Please don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, share. Follow me on my socials. They are in the description box below. And Auntie Mo, we'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.